What's up, everybody? All right, we're moving on from the stuff that we've been covering so far, and we're going to start a completely different topic altogether. In Chapter 12, we're going to start learning about vectors, and in this first section, which is a very long section, by the way, we're going to be learning about the basics of vectors. Now, what's going to happen is that I'm going to make several pretty short videos to present the many various concepts in Section 12.1, lots of things that are considered basics. In this video, we're going to learn, or you're going to learn, to represent two-dimensional and three-dimensional vectors in both column vector form and unit vector form. All right, so first thing we need to make sure we know is what a vector is. And the uh, best description I can give for a vector, well, I'll give the definition in a moment, but a description would be that a vector is very similar to a ray in that it is something that has a direction. I have a picture of a vector right here in two dimensions, and you see this arrow right there indicates that this vector is traveling from point A to point B. Now, it looks like a ray because you're traveling in a certain direction. We're going from A to B versus from B to A. But a vector also has a certain distance, like a line segment does. So it's kind of a combination of a line segment and a ray. At any rate, um, the definition of a vector is that it's a quantity that has size, and direction, and here he has something that has a size because it has a length, and it has a direction because it's going this way. Now, the direction of the vector is what we use to represent the vector in one of two different forms, either column vector form or unit vector form. And so let me describe how that works for you. First of all, notice if we're going from A to B, you can describe the direction that it's going by telling how far horizontally you go, what the horizontal change is from A to B, and then what the vertical change is from A to B. And in this case, that would mean that you go three units to the right and four units down. And very simply, whenever we're trying to represent a vector, we want to say which, what's the horizontal distance and the vertical distance you travel to get from the initial point to the terminal point. And if you want to represent that in column vector form, all you do is you make a set of parentheses and you put the horizontal component first we went three to the right so this is positive had we gone left that would be negative and then you put the vertical component right underneath that we went down so we're going to call that negative four had we gone up it would have been positive four all right then for the unit vector form i need to add some information to your screen real quick you say i wrote something about what are called base vectors down here and i'll come back to that a unit vector is simply a vector that is one unit long, just like a unit circle has a radius of one. All right, a unit vector has a is one unit long, because remember, vectors have size and direction. That's the size. Now there are two special base vectors, that, what are called base vectors, that we use in two dimensions, which is what we're working right here with right there is two dimensions that we use. We have one called i, which is one comma zero, and so base vector i would look like this if you graphed it. Don't know how well you can see the direction there, but that's one unit long and it's going to the right. Doesn't go up or down at all. And there's a base vector J that goes zero units horizontally, but one unit up, so it would look like this. And what we can do is we can take any vector and we can represent it using these base vectors by simply saying that you're going three of these minus four of those, right? We went right three times, so we went I three times, and then we went down four times, so we went j, negative j, four times. We can write then this vector as 3i minus 4j. All right, now that's two-dimensional vectors. I want to give you an idea of what three-dimensional vectors are and how to represent them using each of these forms as well. And we have to use what's called a coordinate space in order to make a picture of those. Now, I've drawn such a coordinate space here. You can see it's got an X and a Y and a Z axis, and I'm going to label something really quickly. All right, you see the X axis is positive going to the right and negative going to the left. The Y axis is positive as you go back, and it's negative as you go towards yourself, so to speak. And the Z axis is positive going up and negative going down. All right, now I'm going to try to represent a vector AB here. That would go from there to there. And in order to write down its column vector or unit form, we need to break down its components. And it has three components because it was, well, in three dimensions, right? So, first of all, we could say that this thing went to the, 
went either left or right. We can say it either went towards you or away from you. And we can either say it went up or down. And in the column vector form, we care about the left or right or the x coordinate first. And you can see that this thing goes one, two units to the left, so that means its x coordinate would be negative. Now, I forgot to show you the symbol for how you represent a vector before. It's basically the same way as you would represent a ray. Okay, that means it's a vector from A to B. All right, and then the y coordinate is how far either forward towards yourself or away from yourself you'd go. And you can see we go uh, one, two units towards ourselves, and that's negative, so that would be negative two. And then we want to see how far up or down we go, and that would be up one, two, three. So there's a column vector form with the x component, y component, and z component. Now, just like there was a, a base vector i and j in two dimensions, there are base vectors i, j, and k in three dimensions, and I'll write their components for you real quick. So vector i goes one unit in the positive x direction, but no units in the, x or, or in the y or z directions. Vector j goes one unit in the positive y direction, but nowhere in the x and z's. Vector k goes one unit in the positive z direction, but nowhere in the x and y directions. All right. Anyway, then this changing from column vector form to unit vector form in three dimensions works the same way as it does in two dimensions. It's just that you have an i, a j, and a k because you have your x, y, and z component, so to speak. So here's another way of representing vector a, b. It means you go negative two units in the x direction, negative two units in the y direction, and positive three units in the z direction. That's representing vectors, folks. Fairly simple. Thanks for watching. Let's continue going through this chapter together.